So, a few days ago, I published a tutorial on how to create a basic custom skybox shader in Godot 4 to make your own atmosphere in a 3D scene. I explained how quick it is thanks to the new sky shader type, but also how this basic technique comes with a well-known issue, that is the sky stretching at the poles and creating a weird distorted point at the top and bottom of the sky sphere. So today, I want to show you how you can go one step further and solve this problem using two methods. Now, just before we dive in, have you ever wanted to get some professional feedback for your Godot project? If you join my Patreon as a Square member, you'll get to ask me for personalized reviews once every two months. That's a full analysis of your project, with a detailed report and suggestions for improvement, all this for only 40 bucks. So if you're curious, be sure to have a look at the free article that explains it all, over here. Okay, so first, let's talk about real, well-prepared sky panorama images. Last time, we generated our sky texture on the fly, using a built-in procedural noise generator. This was a quick and easy way to configure our custom skybox, but it's sort of the root of the problem. Because the texture it generates is completely flat, there is no way that snapping it onto a sphere can give correct results. There will always be some deformations. The trick that most real sky panorama textures use is to deform the image at the top and the bottom to kinda counteract the sphere shrinking effect and get back something that looks nice. This is what we call an equi rectangular map. To get these kind of images, for example, you can go to the Polyheaven website, which is a great hub for free CC0 textures, HDRIs, and 3D assets. In the HDRI category, you'll have a bunch of environment maps that you can use in your 3D projects, be it Unreal, Unity, Blender, or Godot. So here I'm going to look at skies and search for a map with a bit of clouds, like this one. Now, as you can see on the right, you can download the image in EXR or HDR format, which are basically formats specifically made for environment maps, with light data embedded in addition to the color. You can absolutely go for these special formats, they're supported by Godot, as shown in the docs, and so as we said, you notice that there are some weird deformations at the north and south poles of the sky map, but they'll actually look absolutely perfect once reprojected onto our skysphere. To do this, import your image back into Godot and go to the Imports panel. There, make sure that the image compression mode is set to VRAM uncompressed and click Reimport to apply those settings. Then, either reuse the shader that we made last time and pass it to this image, or set up a 3D scene in the same way, so with a world environment node using the sky background mode and a sky resource, but inside the sky resource, rather than using a shader material, create a panorama sky material resource and drag your texture into the panorama slot. And there you go, you now have a clean skybox without any deformations at the poles. Okay, so this is totally a valid way to solve our issue, and if you've got an equi-rectangular sky map, then this is all you need. But there is another common way to avoid this poor stretching problem that I want to talk about, and that's to use what we call a cube map. Basically, as the name implies, a cube map is a texture that consists of six cube faces next to one another, creating a contiguous image when reassembled. For example, if you have this kind of reference texture, this one is from Godot's doc page on cube maps, with the six faces of a cube aligned to the positive and negative x, y, and z axis, then once remapped on your 3D scene sky, you see that the sky becomes a sort of inverted cube that we're sitting in the middle of. Now, the workflow for using cube maps isn't as quick in Godot, but I think it's interesting to show you how to do it. So let's assume now that you've only been given a cube map for your skybox to work with, and let's see how to use this other tool in our 3D scene. The first and easiest solution to using cube maps in Godot is to go to Godot's documentation page about cube maps, scroll to the bottom, and check out this tool that they've linked that allows you to transform your six cube map faces into the equivalent equi rectangular projection image. Just set your six faces in those six inputs by clicking on each button and picking the right image. Oh, 
and then download the completed result at the bottom to get back the exact same kind of texture as our panorama image from before. And so then you can use it inside a panorama sky material like we just did. A second technique, if you really want to stick with cube maps, for example because working with a large 8K EXR image is too much for your platform, it can be to use a script to load up your six face images and create a new cube map resource based on those inside the engine. Here's an example of a script that does that, and by the way, it's a tool script, meaning it can be run in the editor directly without having to launch the game. The function in itself loads up all six cube map images. Then it creates the matching cube map resource from them, and it saves it inside the project as a new asset. Be sure to sort the faces in the proper order in your images array. You need to have the positive image first and the negative image second for each axis from X to Z. Also, don't forget to select your imported image assets, go to the import panel, and import them as images, and not texture to these as is the default. Then hit import, and that's because otherwise Godot won't be able to construct a cube map from them. Once you've set up everything, just put the script on a node, select the node, and click the fake boolean input in the inspector. This will run the method in the tool script and create the cube map resource as expected. Last but not least, you need to actually use this cube map for your sky. For that, you can reuse the same 3D scene setup as last time. So where your environment sky uses a custom sky shader, except the shader won't sample a texture anymore, but a cube map instead. So in your sky shader, you should have a cube map parameter to export the cube map variable as a shader parameter in the inspector, a cube map sample node to get the data from this cube map resource, the eye direction vector provided directly by Godot, that is an easy way to map this kind of texture to a skybox. And all of this is outputted as the color of your sky. And now, if you drag the cube map we just created into the shader parameter slot, you see that our sky shows our image from Polyhaven again, and the poles are properly displayed, just like before with our equirectangular texture, since we've got the right deformations in our original image that has been cut up as a cube map. So, there you go! You now know a few tricks to create custom advanced skies that don't have weird deformations at the poles, and that look great for your sky sphere using either equirectangular images directly or a cube map resource. I really hope you liked these extra tips. Don't hesitate to act in the comments and subscribe to the channel to get more videos. And of course, a huge thanks to my Patreon members for the support and to you for watching. And as always, take care.